Well, hi everyone, my name is Joe and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own spigot slash bucket server for Minecraft. So then, let's get started with the tutorial. So all the web pages I'm going to be showing you uh, throughout this tutorial will be linked down below in the description. And while you're down there in the description, make sure you go and check out the brand new gaming channel me and some of my mates have created. Uh, if you could show us some support over there, it would be absolutely great. So then, let's get on with the tutorial. So first thing we need to do is actually get the server jar file to run the server. Now, there's a few steps to do this, but I'm going to show you two steps. I'm going to show you the proper way, and then I'm going to show you the unsupported way, let's say, or I'm going to give you some information about it. Uh, but I highly recommend you to try the proper way first. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now. And anyway, let's get started. So first website you want to go to is get for windows and you want to download it. So once we click download, it's going to install. So you probably won't have this one on the end because I've already downloaded it before. So we're just going to give it a second to download. And there we go. So what this will allow us to do is to extract the jar file from the build tools. So it's literally building your own server before you run it, let's say. That's the simplest way I can think of putting it. So we're going to put it on here. So And then we're going to double click it. Now it will ask if you want to run it. And I'm going to click yes. And now we're on the install process. So the, the first thing you just need to do is don't touch anything. Put it that way. Just press next, 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 install. That's simple. Don't need to change any settings at all. So we're going to let this install. So everything's been installed default, so everything I've just done then should happen on your computer and nothing should be uh, different, let's say, or let's hope so. So then the next thing we want to do while that's installing, we actually want to come over to the download section. So we want to go to download or just hover over it and then click on spigot slash build tools. Once we're on here, we want to go to build history and make sure you click on the latest build. So the latest build is currently 64. So in the future, that might be 65, 66, 67, and so on. You just want to click on the latest build you can get there. So we're going to click on here. So the latest build for me is September the 22nd, what is literally yesterday when I'm recording this video. We're going to click uh, the build tools. We're going to download it. Right, we've got it there. Now, hopefully your get has been installed. So we want to just unclick all that so it doesn't open up anything. So your build tools is downloading and there we go. So now you want to put your build tools on your desktop. Now one thing I highly recommend you do is you actually make a folder. I'm just going to call mine build and stick that folder in there. So once it's looking like that, you are ready to go to start building your jar file. Now one thing I will recommend is uh, updating your Java. So if you, if you haven't got Java installed, you need to go and get Java installed. Now, first thing you want to click on if you have got it installed is just about. And as you see here, I've got version 8. So that's Java 8. And that's what you need for Minecraft these days to actually, actually run a server. So make sure you have Java 8 on your computer. Not Java 7 or not Java 6 if you still have that. Make sure it's Java 8 64-bit. So if you have uh, got an older version, you can come over to updates and just click update now. And there we go. Uh, mine's already updated so I don't need to do it but if you need to do it just just quickly pause this video run the update then come back and then we're good to carry on so then once we've got that way so now we actually need to start extracting the jar file out of this build tools so first thing you want to do is actually uh, right click in the folder so just right click anywhere don't click on the file you want to right click off a file and then you should have here uh, get GUI here and then get bash here. So we want to click on get bash. So it's just going to open up. So now as you see here we are navigated to you know, my PC. And it's desktop slash build. So as you can see that's that folder there. So once you're on here, uh, yours might say something different. So don't worry about it. As long as you've opened it up in this file, everything should be sound. So the second thing we need to do is actually to run this uh, build tools. Now, currently on the main website, we're just going to have a look. So this main post is uh, saying, uh, you know, the code to run it. Now, this is a, this is still a very early build. Now, I'm going to put this code down in, uh, down in the video description. 
Now, this code will change a little bit later when this comes to default version for Spigot. So I will update it because sometimes it's just this code you'll run like that. And then sometimes when a new version comes out, yeah, you've got to add this little bit on on the end. So it can change, but I'll always update it in the description when it does. So we're going to copy the entire code from the main page. So it will be down in the description. And we're going to paste it into this uh, console. Oh, yep, we can't. Sadly, you can't do Control V. But so you just got to right click and then paste and then run. So it's going to start building the uh, jar file. Now, this can take anywhere from a couple of minutes to 10 minutes. It's all depending on your computer power and your internet speed because it's downloading everything from their uh, servers online. So then I'm going to come back after this is finished. Craft bucket and spigot. Now all these all these other files are for development work, so we don't need to care about them. We just need to care about these two at the bottom right here, or even at the top depends on how you have it laid out. So so on. So we're gonna make we're gonna copy the spigot one, and we don't need this console open up anymore, so we can close that. You want to come back to your desktop. You want to go make a new folder. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine server. And then we're just going to copy it, so you can keep a backup in there, and then open your new file and paste it in here, so it looks like that. Now, the first thing you want to do with this file is go down to rename and get rid of the numbers and the dash. So it just says spigot.jar. Now, if you don't have like the .jar on the end and you're a bit confused, just go to view and click on this option here. And it will show the extensions on your files, so such as um, .jar and so on. So um, the next thing you want to make is a text file. So you don't need to name this one anything. You just need to click Edit. Then you want to go back down into Video Description and find this code. So this code will allow us to run the jar file. Now there are lots of codes like this around on the internet. Uh, it all depends on how your Java is set up and all that type of stuff. So this one should work for quite a lot of you. I might even put down a few other options down in the description. So just keep your eye out down there. So we want to go to save as. And then we want to give this a name. So I'm just going to call mine run. You can call your start, go, anything you want. As long as you have on the end dot bat bat. So you can call it whatever you want. So, you know, run away dot bat. As long as you've got that dot bat on the end, you should not run into any problems. We'll save that. We can click X, and now you should see a file uh, with two little cogs on. Um, what is a batch file? What will allow you to run the jar file? So we can delete the old text file now. So you just have you should have these two just like this on your in this folder, ready to run your server. So we're gonna double click the uh, server, and it's gonna start loading the libraries up. So the server won't start fully because you need to accept the Euler agreement. So just press any key. And then in the folder, you should see eula.txt file. Click on that. Uh, I will actually open it up in Notepad++. We'll just open it in normal Notepad. And what, what we need to do here is just type in true. You can go and read the uh, eula requirements if you wanted to. Uh, if you're sending donations, I recommend you go and do that. We want to save it and then come back over to our server and click on run. So then it's going to start up. There we go. So as you see here, uh, now you want to give it access to allow, you know, for you to actually join it. And even if you want, if you want to take a further step and go and port forward, um, what will allow you to get your friends online. But I'll talk about that at the end of the video as well. So then we are, there we go. So it's everything's done. We can go into Minecraft now and actually uh, start playing. So there's my Minecraft. So I'm going to launch it up. Now, if you want friends to join, you need to port forward. There will be a video link in the tutorial taking to somebody else's channel who's got a really good port forwarding tutorial, uh, who I always recommend people to go and see. So you want to click on that if you want to get friends to join. So yeah, let's let's actually see if we can join our server. So then once we're in here, we want to click on multiplayer. And now we want to go to direct connect and then type in local host so that is your local IP to connect to your server we're going to press enter and as you see here I've connected to the server and we're on so if I type type in the chat here 
you'll see it comes up in the console. So now, if you want to give your uh, players or you actual admin permission on your server, uh, you need to come back over to the console and type in OP, then your Minecraft name. So if I can actually get my Minecraft name properly, there we go. So op quad bamba. And in here, it will say Aqua Bamba. Now we're able to do game mode one and fly about. So then you have your Minecraft server. Now, for the people who, let's say, didn't get the jar file, um, let's say the build tools did not work and you ran into a load of problems, you can go online, go onto Google and just type in sort um, you know, spigots spigot jar file for one minecraft 1.12.2 and there are websites who actually give you the direct downloads to them now that's on your own head that's not the official way it's not supported by anyone uh, that is your own responsibility there so sadly you know if you have any problems with that nothing to do with me um it's you know you're taking responsibility by downloading it off a third party website so i just want to warn you I highly recommend you to try this method first before you have to go to that. But that is like a backup method. I've never done it because this has always worked for me. But for some people might run into a lot of problems and they might just download it off there. And you know, it'll be all working and uh, great. But anyway, so yeah, that is a tutorial. And just to stop your server, it's just stop. There we go. So you have your uh, server right here. Now, the next video will be actually on how to find plugins and install them, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So then, if you guys can recommend anything, how, how I can improve this tutorial and so on, please leave a comment. And if you need any help, also leave a comment. And make sure you subscribe, like, favourite, and go and follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.